Hello and good evening and welcome to the show. This is our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and just about everything and anything that's going to keep you inspired. Remember, I'm not here to sell you a pen. This is independent fountain pen journaling ink commentary. And I am here to keep you inspired and to kind of uh, push back against the gatekeepers. You know, those people that criticize you, hold you back, maybe take some of the joy out of your latest pen acquisition or tell you that journaling is not going to get you anywhere or any kind of negativity. Maybe they criticize how you hold your pen, your handwriting, whatever it is. I'm here to push back against that in a very gentle way. We're going to try to win those folks over too. So, um, you know, I'm very delighted to have you here. It's always fun doing the live show Tuesday night at 8. I think it balances out some of the other content that I do very nicely. We do sort of high concept videos here most of the time. I try to stay away from boring things. That's kind of the, if there's a modus operandi to this channel, it's the fact that I just try to stay away from boring things. And even when I review a pen, I try to do it from a different angle. To me, it's more important how you interact with this pen, how it inspires you, how it could lift you up to do even more creative work, more interesting journaling that you and it could become sort of a cohesive unit as you write where the pen disappears and it becomes an extension of your mind. It becomes an extension of your thoughts and you just keep flowing and writing and getting it all out and down on paper. That's what it's about. If you're looking for someone to weigh a pen and tell you how long it is in millimeters, I might do it occasionally, but this is probably not the place for that sort of thing. It just, it bores me, guys. It bores me. And if it bores me, it must bore you. We're just, we're trying to be different. All right. But not like trying to be different. We just are different. Okay. I'm going to say hello to everyone. I see a lot of lovely people here tonight. Donna Kowalski, absolute legend. John Manuel, lovely fellow. Tom Morley. Debbie. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Sandra. Sandra Harris. Hello. Eric Linneman, Kirk Geisinger, the amazing and incredibly supportive and kind Kirk Geisinger. Daily Charm Addict, who I have quite a few conversations with in the comments. We do a lot of um, conversations in the comments. I spend a lot of time there. So it's very important to me that we're making a good connection, you and me, because we're trying to take this channel somewhere to really interesting places. Because you think about a pen, a pen is this basic writing instrument. In a way, in a modern world, it's almost, it's almost, I'm gonna say it's just iconic in a way. Even if you're not into fountain pens, you're going to recognize it. You're always going to know it. You might speak into your Siri to write or even to journal, but you just can't get away from a pen. You're going to circle back. You're going to see how amazing it is when you get some ink on a page and start drawing a line. And there's just those mad circles and it's just uninterrupted and an incredible flow. Because ballpoint pens, you know, ballpoint pens are extremely democratic, I guess, in a way, because they're free. They're everywhere. You can pick one up at the bank. You can pick one up at the Chinese restaurant when you sign a check at the uh, register, at least at mine, there's a whole thing of a local bank's pens there for you to just take one. But um, the funny thing is about ballpoint pens is how unreliable they are. I mean, let's not even speak about how awful they are for the environment, how disposable they are, how sort of sad and uninspiring they are. They're also just terrible writers. I mean, if you pick up six ballpoint pens, sometimes two of them don't write at all. They run out of ink rather quickly. I mean, I guess I don't have to convince you. You know, you know, you wouldn't be here if you were a ballpoint pen aficionado. 
But I'll say this too, if you're journaling and you're writing and you're using a ballpoint pen and that's what works for you and that's what inspires you, I'm not going to criticize you, you know, whatever works. So what the important part is that you're writing. That's what's important to me. I see a lot of people here, a lot of likes. I see thumbs flying up. Thanks for that. It's always a lot of fun because we have the live audience in the chat. I try to keep an eye on that while I do the show. Sort of makes me a little schizophrenic, maybe even a little more than normal. So I see uh, really lovely people here. So if you are watching this in the replay, feel free to comment as well. The conversation continues. I see almost every comment on my channel. YouTube filters some, so if you're a little on the nasty side, I'm probably not going to see it, but otherwise I probably will see it. I try to respond to every comment um, that I can. I certainly try. So we do have some fantastic conversations in the comments. So we have a good show for you tonight. I have my green tea. Try to keep my voice. Tonight, we're going to speak about smoothest fountain pens and what that means and sort of desirable smoothness and undesirable smoothness. So I think it's going to be a really fun conversation. I have a selection of pens you cannot see of my smoothest pens. I did just pick one from a brand I don't have double oh i do have doubles on, on a brand but i mostly don't have doubles on a brand but um i just wanted to get the conversation going and share some of my smoothest fountain pens with you so if you're looking for a list of the smoothest fountain pens you'll be able to get that from this video from our main topic in a few minutes because we have a lot to talk about before not the least of which is to recognize the incredibly kind, generous, and supportive Kirk Geisinger. And a $5 super chat, which is very much appreciated. Thank you. It goes toward the paying for Ecamm fund, which I appreciate. Always trying to make the channel stand on its own. You'd be surprised how expensive it is to run a YouTube channel. Um, sometimes I have to buy pens. Sometimes I have to buy inks. Some, and there's software costs and lots of other things. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for helping me keep the lights on. And membership does too. So if you really enjoy this channel, consider becoming a member. It's a lot of fun to be a member. For one thing, I think the biggest thing that people seem to really like is our pen pal group for Cognoscenti and Illuminati members. So if you join at the Cognoscenti or Illuminati level, we will exchange letters and then you can speak with the other members of the channel through correspondence, get some great letter writing practice, and there's some incredible, incredible people that you can speak with. Great penmanship, uh, great letter folding skills like Ali J. Hopefully Ali J is here this evening, but Ali J can fold a letter like nobody's business. Kaylee, just wonderful people back there. So... So it's a lot of fun. Ooh, and now there's Super Chat. Thank you very much. I need to recognize T. Charlton, a $20 Super Chat. We are here for you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. It's overwhelming. I see the likes. T. Charlton's being very generous with a Super Chat. Thank you. Helps keep the lights on. Kind of keeps me motivated, too, to be honest, you guys. You'd be surprised. The feedback is what keeps me going. Um, comments are really important to me. I read the comments, and I find if somebody says something in the comments, it's like, I didn't understand what you were saying about X. I kind, It kind of tells me I didn't do a good job speaking about X it, it, when that happens. The rare occasion when it happens. No, it does happen. Um, or if someone, if a lot of people say, I love when you and your wife did cool or not cool, you need to do more of those. Well, that's the kind of feedback that I can put into action. And I think I'm seeing some of what you enjoy. I love making every video I've made. So it's not a big deal for me to concentrate on the ones that you guys like. It, it 
it's more fun for all of us, I think, that way. You like the ink videos. The best five blue inks video from last week seemed to be popular. You seemed to enjoy that. I'm glad you mostly liked my picks. Uh, I do kind of wish that list was longer. I love blue inks, and there's other ones that could have easily made that list. And I think had I made that list on a different day, it may have been different. So things like, um, you know, Serenity Blue is, uh, you know, one that could have easily made the list. Eric Lindemann says, hey, today your wife is the star of the channel. Um, truly, she truly is. She comes on... And it changes the whole dynamic. I, I love when Helen joins me. I have a project for the two of us that's along the lines of cool or not cool, but totally different that I think you guys are going to love. We are waiting for her to get over her cold. She has a pretty bad cold. And once she can speak again, you know, the way that she normally speaks without coughing and whatnot, we're going to film together. So I think you're going to really enjoy that. But getting back to the inks, you know, blue inks is such a deep, deep subject. And there's so many great blues. Uh, the Profundere by J. Bond that could have easily made the list. I, I compared it with Midnight Blue. And I went with Midnight Blue, but it, a, a different day, I might have gone a different direction. So I'm sure we're going to do that again, probably with black, certainly with brown, but the next ink video that's coming up in a few weeks, which I cannot tell you what it is, except to tell you, you have literally never seen anything like it. I am so proud of it. It is so different, and it's going to be followed up by a very similar one a few months down the road. So you are going to really enjoy that, I think. So it, it features a certain type of inks, a certain family, in a very sort of cozy, beautiful, beguiling way with some of the best B-roll I've ever filmed. So I really hope you enjoy it. Oh, I see a lot of nice words for Helen. Yeah, she's okay. It's not too bad. So don't worry. It's just a cough. But it's one of those ones you get in February, especially with the dry air here in New England. Very insistent. Although... It was 60 degrees today. Actually, if you listen in the background, you might actually hear her coughing because, yeah, it's it's a, it's a pretty bad cold. Poor kid. So, I also want to tell you about this week's video. This week's video is a very, very important video. It was an idea I've had for months, and I finally got around to filming it, and... I'm so proud of it. I am so proud of it. I really hope you guys enjoy it. It's called A Tale of Two Twisbees. A Tale of Two Twisbees. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I, I should have said that. That's, that's, that's what I should have said. I said it was the best of times. And I tied it in somehow, but I didn't say the best of times. Yeah, I, I don't know how I missed that one until this very instant. I am, I'm a sucker for a bad pun, like anyone else. But the video is fantastic. It's that age-old argument when it comes to Twisby. You guys know it. Maybe you don't. I'm not going to tell you. I want you to watch the video. So I think you'll enjoy it. A Tale of Two Twisbys this Thursday. So, very good. Oh, here's something very, very important I have to tell you. After I have a little bit of tea. First off, I see a lot of likes. Can we get some likes for the giant alligator? Oh, sorry, crocodile. It's a crocodile, not an alligator. The giant crocodile is back. It's almost spring. So the spring sweaters are coming out. They're coming out, guys. All right. So I want to tell you that after many, many months, the ghost cat is back. Do you know about the ghost cat? See, this channel is very meta. There are themes. There are poems. There are movie references. There are Rick Astley references. There are a lot of things that continually show up. It doesn't mean you can't jump in at any time and, you know, follow what's going on. But it's very, very meta. One of the meta things, and it's kind of 
bizarre because I am not somebody who believes in ghosts. I don't believe in anything supernatural. I am purely materialistic. If something isn't right in front of me, I don't believe in it. If it's not tangible and, you know, provable by science and, and recording and measuring, I, it doesn't exist to me. You know, except for like hope and love. Those, those sort of things. I'm romantic still. But I, I don't know if you've known this, if you've heard me talk about it before. But there appears to be a ghost cat in our house. Now, there is a cat in our house. So I know what it is to live with a cat. But what happens sometimes is my wife and I will be in bed and we will feel the cat jump on the bed. And then we usually kind of look and we want to like pat her head. She comes up and purrs and, and all that. And we give her a little love. And then she settles down in between my wife's legs and takes a little nap. That's, that's how we're used to interacting with our, our cat. Well, sometimes we feel it jumping on the bed and there's no cat there. It's just not there. Or sometimes we're lying in bed and it's purring. And we figure it's our cat and our cat's not in the room. It's odd. The weirdest times are when I'm, you know, using the bathroom at night and it's dark and the cat will brush up against my leg as she does sometimes. And then she's not there. She's actually sound asleep in the other room. And whenever ghost cat's around, my cat isn't around. So what happened last night and before I tell you what happened last night, I want to recognize some people. So thank you. Um, sorry, my eyes. Jamie Chandler just wanted to support Hemingway with $9.99. Thank you very much for the super chat. And uh, I think this is our first time kind of speaking. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for the support. It really helps the channel. It means the world to me. Thank you. It's very, very kind. And frankly, it's encouraging. When I when you do that, it encourages me. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I see another one. Terry Edgington. This is not the first time Terry and I are interacting. We interact quite a bit. But another $9.99 for the crocodile. Thank you so much. And to keep the lights on. We got to keep the... It's this side. It's reversed and I am see myself reversed. That's why I'm always reaching in the wrong spot. We have to keep the crocodile fed. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. It's lovely of you. I really appreciate all your kindness and your support. You've been there for a long, long time and I appreciate it. You're the best. So thanks for all the super chats, guys. It means the world to me. Thank you. All right, but you want to hear the rest of the story about the ghost cat. I know you do. So we were watching television last night. And we're watching The Sopranos, which is another story unto itself. I've seen The Sopranos, but my wife hasn't because she grew up in the UK. And it was less of a thing over there. They had it, but less of a thing. It was a huge thing over here. So watching The Sopranos and the cat came under my legs and her tail kind of brushed under my knees and she kept walking. And um, I saw the tail go by and then I looked for her and I didn't see her but you know it's a cat so I didn't think too much about it because cats cats scurry off even quickly even when you go to look for them sometimes maybe she went under the couch or something so I didn't think too much about it except that about I don't know 30 or 45 seconds later I hear what we call sack of potatoes and my daughter has a bunk bed. It's a single bunk, and she sort of has a little play area underneath it. She loves it. It's, I wish I had that when I was her age. When my daughter goes to bed, the cat likes to spend that time with my daughter. And they cuddle until around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Then she comes downstairs to us and then usually follows us to bed. Okay, that's kind of the cat routine. Because cats, if you live with a cat, you know what it's like to live with somebody with obsessive compulsive disorder? Because cats follow routines very strictly and they kind of repeat these, these processes. Like, my cat caught a mouse by the heater and now she sits there forever. She's been sitting there for six years without a single mouse. But one day, she's going to get another mouse. But that's what they do. They love it. So anyway. 
45 seconds later, I hear plop. And it's the cat jumping off the bunk bed, hitting the floor. I can hear it. So I asked my wife, I'm like, is Ophelia up with Imogen? And my wife says, yeah, yeah, she's been up there all night. And I was like, really? I'm like, did you just see me a minute ago when I got up and I looked? And she's like, yeah, I was wondering what you were doing. I was like, I was looking, I was looking at the cat. The cat's tail just went by. And then we just kind of looked at each other and we said, yeah, ghost cat. Ghost cat's back. Don't know why. She's gone for a while. I feel like it's a girl cat. She's gone, but she's back. All right. So I hope, I hope you don't mind my story, but it's true. It's strange. Bill B58, Super Chat, 1999. So enjoy all of your content. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support. And it's my pleasure. Just hearing that you enjoy it means the world to me. That's It means everything to me. I'm so glad that this channel caught on. There was a time when I was making videos into the void, um, Bill, and I felt like no one was watching. And you can kind of see your analytics. And I put a video up and it would get 250 views in a week. And views aren't everything, but... You, you know, you just kind of want to reach people. You want to have that communication and you want that exchange. For me, it's about connections. It's about making connections with with all of you. And I do find that the more honest I am about things and with myself, the more receptive my videos seem to be. So it's actually YouTube and this and you, you, are making, helping to make me a better person. It's opening me up and it's making me share and I'm learning so much about all of you. It's making me more empathetic. And it's it's really wonderful that we've built this community. So thank you, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, and Ghost Cat. You know, real cat's never down. She's never down when I'm recording. It would be nice. So, all right. I think maybe we'll get into the main topic. I've I've had you wait long enough. By the way, if you've reached this point and you haven't subscribed, why not subscribe? You like this channel. I would appreciate it. I'd like to get to know you. And thanks for all the likes and thanks for all the super chats. I appreciate it. Somebody disliked. How can you, I didn't even do anything yet. How can you dislike? So critical, you. I know. I think I can see who it was out there. All right. Let's talk about some pens, shall we? I got a new setup. I'm testing this out. I could have put up another light, but it would have sort of been behind me. I'm not sure if that would have worked. Maybe I can put one over here. You can't see. But I think this is okay. I think you can see this okay. If you can see this okay, let me know in the comments or in the chat, uh, maybe with some likes. That would help. But um, why is this good? Because you ever notice I get wobble sometimes? Uh, all right, that's me wobbling the table, but it's not wobbling the camera, right? The camera is steady. So because the camera's on a tripod. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so that's the plan. Ooh. Charisse, how are you? Nine ninety nine super chat. Thank you so much. Let me put this up here. Oh, okay, it's already up there. People can see it. Our eighty degrees odd weather today made me want to buy some spring flowers for your daughter. Thank you so much, Charisse. You know what we're doing with my daughter now? We're pressing flowers in books. So, um, so that's lovely. We're gonna we'll buy some and we'll press them. And then when I write letters, I'm going to take the pressed flowers and include them. I think that would be fun. But not in an annoying way. You ever get like letters and things fall out of them? Confetti or hearts and things. I mean, I guess the hearts are cool, but not glitter. Glitter glitter needs a warning. You know, glitter should have beware. There's glitter on this card. You get to Christmas cards. Remember in the old days, it would have uh, like white and gold glitter on it and you'd open it up and it'd be everywhere i mean if you were eating a sandwich it would the glitter would poison your sandwich so but thank you sharice i really appreciate it thank you 
So we're going to talk about some smooth pens. And I think smoothness is an interesting thing, right? Because a lot of us aspire toward having the smoothest. It's a lot of S's I put there of fountain pens. And you ask yourself, what is the most smooth fountain pen? And um, maybe we'll answer that tonight. I think we will. We have a nice selection. When you are on this smooth trajectory, there are some other qualities of nibs and writing that do fall off. So if you want maximum smooth, you're going to give up on things like feedback and sometimes even what I call the scribing noise. So let me define terms. So I think terms are very important. Let's start with smooth. So the way this channel sees a smooth nib is the quality by which the nib glides across a page like the sharpened skate of an ice skate along a frozen pond, just without any obstruction, without feeling any grain in the paper, just gliding on a cushion of beautiful, fat, wet, continually flowing ink. That is smooth. That's how I define it. Feedback is the ability of a nib to give a very pleasant writing performance while also registering some of the small grain and irregularities of whichever paper you're writing in back up through the pen so that you have a bit more of a tactile connection between the fountain pen, the nib, and the paper. So it's roughly equivalent to those glorious cars that we had back in the 1980s before the days of power steering where you could feel the road through the steering wheel. You got that feel of how the tires were gripping. And it was this communication through your arms and your brain and your senses through the steering wheel, down through the drive shaft. You know, I don't really know all the parts of a car, so just go with me here, okay? Out through the wheels and the tires, which of course are the most important part sometimes of a car and onto the road surface. So that's feedback. In the fountain pen world, you have the paper. Some paper is incredibly smooth, just polished marble smooth, like Rhodia and Claire Fontaine. Other paper has a bit of grain to it. It still can show the beautiful quality of the ink, but it's a little bit more tactile. When you feel it, it almost maybe a touch velvety or grainy, but a very pleasant way. I'm thinking like Tomoe River has that quality. Some other papers. What are we using tonight? Tonight we're using Claire Fontaine. This is pretty smooth. Certainly cheaper papers have a lot of grain. If you think about grain, think about writing on a paper bag. That's, that's a lot of grain. Or any of those papers that are have a high cotton um, content or a high rag. Okay? So that little vibration that those grains create in the nib go up through the pen into your hand. And it's very pleasant. We're going to talk about what I think the ultimate expression of feedback is. So, so these are sort of the dueling things that we're dealing with, with smoothness versus that. Now, for me, sometimes I want smooth. I don't want to feel anything. It's like being intoxicated with ink. You're just filling in all the different, um, different irregularities in the page, just gliding across it like a hydroplane. What are those things? No, hydroplanes what you do when you're driving over the water. What are what are those um those things they have in England that they blow up with air and then they move over the water really cross? Hovercraft. Thank you. Hovercraft. 
So, so it's almost like that where there's just this cushioning of ink. Okay. So now that we've belabored that, let's get into specifics, shall we? So one of my smoothest pens is this. This is a Conway Stewart Churchill Honey Noir Lever Fill Fountain Pen. It's quite a large pen, quite a dramatic pen, quite an incredible writer. It has a Yovo gold nib that's been hand-tuned by John Sorica in the UK, a nibmeister of some renown, of incredible renown. This is one of my, oh, here's one problem. I want to get a nice angle for you. This is one of my smoothest pens. Hmm. I didn't think this through too much. We're just going to do this then. One of the things you have to be careful though with a lever fill fountain pen is when you fill it. Now, lever fill fountain pens can sort of burp up ink anyway at any given time. So sometimes you feel like you're writing with a sword of Damocles over your head. But more importantly, when you fill a pen like this, you tend to pump the lever a few times because you want to get a good fill. So you put your nib into the ink, probably up into the grip section. Then you're going to pump the lever probably two or three times. And then you're going to leave it in there for a few seconds to fill. Now, when that's done, this is the mistake I make. You probably know this, but I'm pointing it out for those of you that don't because I forget this a lot. If you don't dry out your feed all around your feed as well as you can, and I use shop towels. Shop towels are awesome. They're less linty than paper towels. They're incredibly absorbent. You can absorb oil with these off of the shop floor if you were changing uh, a car's oil. So this is perfect for nibs and cleaning up ink as you can see i've had this particular one it's it's rather large but not too bad it's been in my desk now for probably for a few months and it it looks like it you get a good selection of the inks i've been using right i can see a clay de saphir this looks like emerald de chevreur this is oxblood this is kind of a rorschach test because you can see that the oxblood went and i must have folded it because it's symmetrical so you can see a lot of different inks. This is definitely Pearl Noir. Okay. So I highly recommend these. So you clean all around it because with a lever fill pen, especially, and actually any pen, this probably goes for any pen really, but certainly for these. If your feed is full of ink and you've just fed it, when capillary action happens, it just super saturates your nib. And then it feels like your pen is leaking and you're asking yourself, why is it leaking? Why is it leaking? Well, it's not so much leaking as it is so full that the ink has nowhere to go. Boy, this is an amazing writer. Now, one of the things you can see how smooth this is I'm barely holding it. You can get any kind of line out of this thing, even barely holding it. It's just so, so fun to write with and so large. And you know why I have it? Let me also show you the Series 58. So this is the Churchill Honey Noir. And this is the Series 58, just to give you a size comparison. It's quite a difference. This one truly has a vintage feel. And by the way, also incredibly smooth. You're going to be seeing this pen a lot very, very soon. Very, very soon. 
Hey, Shaq, I see, I see your comment. That's a very good point. Um, yeah, probably the one time you don't want to super clean and dry out your feed is when it's a flex nib. That is very true. By the way, we're not looking at any flex nibs this evening. I did eliminate them from this because I just don't really consider them smooth. Even my 146, which is pretty smooth for a extra fine. But um, I could write with this all night. I love the dimensions of this. This is a beautiful, well-balanced pen. Also, Shaq MD, if you guys aren't following his channel, I highly recommend it. He has fantastic handwriting. He is probably wincing at mine right now. But, um, you know, we do what we can, my friends. All right, so this is one of my smoothest. One of the biggest attributes of this pen is it's shockingly beautiful. It also doesn't photograph very well. You know, that's the one thing. This is very gold, and it comes across as more brown-green. Even when I color correct, I have a very tough time getting this to come out in its true colors. It's very gold-orange. And it comes out kind of greenish. There, there's a little bit. You can see it, it there in the reflective bits. That, that's pretty good. I'm looking at the monitor. So very smooth, guys. You can, you, there's, there's definitely one of the most smooth ones. You don't get a lot of feedback with this, but you do get some. You do get an experience of the page. I forgot to mention that. And you get that nice scribing noise. Do you hear the nice noise the nib makes? I call that a scribing noise because in the 19th centuries, being a scribe was well, actually up until about the 20th century. It was an actual job. All right. So let's go into another pen. That's the epitome of smooth. A Twisby. I want to make sure I cover all my bases with different price points. So if you want one of the smoothest pens, you can do it with 35 bucks. This is a little bit more because it's custom color, but still. This is a Yovo nib on a Twisby, but it's also a stub. And I don't know what they do, what kind of specs they hold these up to. But boy, are they nice writers. So this is the Twisby Eco. But this would be true... Tr Excuse me, this would be true of any Twisby with a stub nib. Nice scribing noise, nice smooth pen. So this is definitely one of my favorites. One of my go-to pens on a daily basis. Um, by the way, I have um, Karub de Chipre in here. It doesn't look like there's a lot of shimmer. I don't see a lot of shimmer. But it is. It is that ink. A glorious pen. I'm having a little trouble with it because of this angle. You can see the ink this puts down. I mean, it's obviously smooth because it's so wet. It's just such a nice line. Brilliant. 35 bucks. Fantastically smooth writer. Beautiful pen. Beautiful. And by the way, this Thursday's video is a tale of two Twisbees. This may be one of them. It may be. Maybe not. We shall see. Okay. The epitome of smooth is the Mont Blanc Egyptomania. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one because it's not the most available pen right now. It's becoming more and more increasingly rare, but it has a similar nib as other 
Heritage Series Mont Blanc. So if you see one in this shape, they're very soft for Mont Blanc nibs. They're not flex. They don't really, no, they don't. Not that they don't really give you line variation. They don't give you line variation as a result of flex. The way the nibs are cut can give you a bit if you keep it um, parallel to the line. Yeah. There's a reason why this is often my most favorite pen. This is one of those pens when I pick it up. I almost ask myself, why do I need another pen? It is so brilliant. So smooth. Such a enjoyable writing experience. Very smooth. Ooh, so wet too. Can you see how wet it is? Look at that. See how wet? If you don't like wet pens, Mont Blanc might not be for you. But what are they great for? For one thing, signing your name. Super fun to sign your name with one of these. Yeah, that's nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, these are good. Very, very good. So you could do a lot worse than a Mont Blanc. So let's roll into another one since I have two. Shall we? The mighty 149. Mighty 149. Let's talk about this for a second. So I often mention that the pendulum swings on taste for me. I got away from thicker, more dramatic pens, and I got into more elegant, smaller, slender pens for a few months, maybe almost six months. The Egyptomania is a slender pen by these standards, although I'll show you them together. It's not quite as small as you would think. Um, the Egyptomania has a reputation for being a small pen, and it certainly has vintage dimensions. But here it is with the 149. It's not much different. The difference is, you know, I don't post my 149. I used to, but I don't anymore. And I can't post the Egyptomania. The Egyptomania cannot post. But um, here they are, side by side length. Not that far off, as you'd think. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you think the Egyptomania would be maybe here? But, you know, that's pretty much side by side. It's, it's about, I'm going to guess five millimeters, maybe four. You know, it's not that far off. Okay, so we're talking about smoothness. You cannot have a conversation about smoothness without the mighty Mont Blanc 149. This one's about 12 years old, never been serviced. I'm not bragging, I'm just kind of lazy. But here it is. Always reliable. Always a pure joy to write with. Always incredibly wet. Maybe my smoothest pen, maybe, but you'll have to wait till the end to find out. Because I will tell you which of my pens is smoothest. And whether or not that's a good thing. The ink is Oxblood. Did you all know it was Oxblood? Let me know in the comments if you thought it was Oxblood. You guys could lose me in this. When I pick this pen up, I can go into the zone so easily. And there's a reason for this. The reason is how this grip feels with my hand. Now, I have an issue with my right arm where it's numb down to here. It goes to my thumb and it goes up to here. So it makes gripping a pen often very challenging. Sometimes you'll see me grip a pen like this. I'm holding on to it for dear life. 
But when I have a good day, like today I'm having a very good day, even though I am very tingly right here. Um, I can grip it like this and really enjoy steering it. I feel a bit more like an artist. This, this is more of sort of a sketchy kind of holding a pen for me when I want to sketch. So I, I really quite like it. So, but this pen is very, very comfortable for me to hold like this. So I quite enjoy it. A, a glorious pen. Puppet access brings up food a nibs. You're not wrong, you know, and I mean, especially considering that you sent me one. Um, food a nibs are probably the smoothest nibs, but I didn't include them because I almost felt like it was cheating. But if you want pure smoothness, they put down so much ink. Not wrong. So I totally agree with that. There's another master of smoothness, and this is a pelican. This particular one. Is an M600 Souverain. Oh, somebody got me. And it's a lovely, lovely pen. Beautiful red tortoise. Obviously not made out of a real one. And it's a absolutely brilliant writer. Also, I believe, has ox blood in it. Which is really funny. I could get by on a few inks. I think that's a future video. How few inks I could get by on. And if I were to make a list, the Pelican M600 would certainly be on it. Very smooth. Boy, are these nibs pleasant. Beautiful scribing noise. A very noisy nib. I love that. Very pretty, too. I wish I could zoom in. I don't have the ability with this particular camera. But hopefully if you're watching on a television or something, you can see gorgeous nib. Ah, oh, so gorgeous. Such a nice pen. Gift from my wife. One birthday. One birthday. I wonder who got my hands. I think it must have been my Egyptomania. It's the only one that's in that color. So I must have uh, slid down too much. But I don't know. It looks pretty clean. I really don't know. I'll figure it out. Doesn't matter. Probably happened before I filmed. Here's another incredibly smooth one. Um, can't fill this right now because I'm filming with it. So you're going to have to take my word for it. This is not the palladium nib. This is the modern 18 karat nib. But um, wow, what a pen, guys. You know, I am filming this right now. And I can tell you, I, I don't like to give away my video ideas, especially so far in advance, but I haven't dedicated an entire video to the Visconti Homo sapiens yet. I've included it in lists. I've compared it to the Mont Blanc 149. I'm going to compare it to some other pens very, very soon. So an incredible, incredibly smooth pen with not much feedback here's another an optima aurora optima oh solo mio this pen reminds me of positano or amalfi a summer in sicily oh and guess which ink is in here anyone in the comments want to guess which ink is in here Oh boy, I am looking kind of maniacal here. Yes, it has the mighty ox blood in it. The problem is I just like it so much. I have, I don't know how many inks I have right now, but it's hard for me. When I like an ink, I use it a lot. And I actually think blue inks look really good with the orange, but this is an incredible smooth nib. They're in-house nibs. I believe. Yeah, they are. I had to tweak it, though. I'll be honest with you. I bought this, and I didn't want to send it back because, I don't know, just being kind of a guy on YouTube, I feel a little bad sometimes sending things back. So I, I knew I could fix it myself, so I put a 
shim, what we in prison talk call a shim, between the tines, and I left it for a day. And now it writes great. All right, I'm looking at the time and I'm seeing I'm running out of time because I do like to keep this under an hour. Did you know this would be on the list? Did you know? The Pilot Custom 823. Oh boy. This is not, I don't know what's in here. It's not Oxblood. And it doesn't look like a clay to sapphire. I'm not sure. It could be blue profunders, but it looks too light. I'm not sure what it is. You know, when I went to film with my Visconti Homo sapiens, I had to empty it because I didn't know what ink it was. And you can't film with a pen. And people ask, what, what was that ink? And sometimes it's like, I don't remember. I don't track that. I couldn't. I'm, I, I'm filming all the time. So, and most of the time it's oxblood. So this is the perfect union for me of smoothness, feedback, performance, and poise. It, it's a great pen. I'd put this up against anything. If you have this pen, I've said this a million times, I'll say it a million times more. You can buy another pen, but you don't have to. It's brilliant. It's as good as any on this table. But it's not the smoothest. Now I'm going to cover some really quick because we're running out of time. The Brass Sport. Oh, this might have been the one that got me. I don't know. Maybe not. Kaveco Brass Sport. So wet. Look at that, guys. Great scribing noise. Oh, so inky. Look at that inky wonderfulness. They call it a calligraphy nib. It's a stub nib, but it's beautiful and it's so fun to use and you can write quite small. There's this sort of misconception that if you have a stub, you can't write small, but sure you can. Well, I have to put it down. Sorry. So you can certainly write small and it looks dramatic. So very smooth pen. Now, I want to point out an incredible pen I've shown to you before. This is a Watcherman Charleston. It has a gold nib. It's a fine. It's Art Deco, but the nib is strangely small. I've always taken points off. It's a very Art Deco pen, very glorious, but very small nib. I don't think it's full, and I can't fill it right now because we're running out of time. But I want to tell you that this is one of the smoothest, most precise, fantastic journaling, note-taking nibs I ever had. But now I'm going to show you what my smoothest pen is. It's this one. This is the mighty Schaefer Legacy. It's about 20 years old. It's from around 2004, right before Schaefer kind of gave up the ghost. It was really a great run. These final Schaefer's were absolutely brilliant. This inlaid nib, Art Deco, diamond shaped, dramatic, very strident, almost like some sort of dart or something. Oh, it is Phil. I didn't think it was Phil. Oh boy, I better be careful. Uh, I didn't think it had ink in it. And well, does it or is it just dirty? Yeah, this has been sitting a while. I think it's just dried up. Sadly. Because I don't, I don't get to use this a lot. But I, boy, is it smooth. This is a fire hose. It's almost negative for how smooth it is. You don't feel anything on the page. But if you want something dramatic and you want to write your name and um, you know take really bold notes, this is a medium that writes like a, a double bold. It, it's just stupendous. So this is my smoothest pen. It has a click cap, this glorious shiny chrome, and maybe the most beautiful, interesting, intense nibs available. I'm going to ink this up. I'm going to clean it and ink it after filming. All right, so out of these, what are the real notables? Oh, okay, I'll tell you. If it were me and I wanted a selection 
of the best, best in class, Pilot Custom 823. Absolutely brilliant, about 335 bucks. A grail pen for many people. You can stop there if you want. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So smooth. Honey Noir Churchill, something about John Serica finishing these nibs off, making them sort of transcend their yovo ness. I like that. Transcends its yovo ness. Incredible. Great pen. I think it's about 700 US dollars. And the Mont Blanc 149. Just one of the things I love about this pen, it never lets me down. It never gives me up. It never runs around or deserts me. It's just a fantastic pen that writes so smooth. Anytime I reach for it, it inspires me. My wife bought it for me, so I have a ton of sentimental attachment to it. So this one is well. So out of all these, for smoothness, I'm going with these three. So if you're more on a budget, 823. If you're super on a budget, Twisby Eco. But Twisby Eco is a little bit more on the generic scale. I mean, it's a Yovo stub. They, they use nice specs, but you're going to find that on pretty much any pen. You could even finish yourself. But the 823, brilliant. The Churchill Honey Noir and the Mont Blanc 149. Sorry about that. <laughs> I hit the wrong one. That's my opening credit. I don't have ending credits, but um, how about that? Pretty, pretty um, straightforward show. I don't know if I've ever done a straightforward show like that. This is a lot like how I film, by the way. I could probably edit this down into an, um, a video. Maybe I will at some point. But uh, super fun to go through pens like that and talk about smoothness because I think smoothness is very important. I really do. Oh, Scott Lasky says a new HJism. Transcend Yovoness. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. I like that so much. Uh, Puppet Access says, I can't imagine paying $700 for something with a Yovo nib for the writing experience. Try one, buddy. That's all I can say. It's glorious. Um, you know, it's been worked on by a nib smith. So you kind of have to build that in, right? So maybe that makes it more like a $600 pen. But then you get other stuff too. It's bespoke, made to you. It's got a lever fill. Of course, you can do other fill systems too. But I'm just going by experience and the way it writes and the way these write. It's glorious. It's so smooth. I wish you lived closer. We could play, like, share the pen. I would trust you with my pens. Laddie Gardner, the mighty Laddie, comes in at the 11th hour with... A super chat for 25 bucks. Thank you so much. At the buzzer, indeed. Thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. Laddie is the best. We talk all the time. Speaking of people I talk to, Wolverine says hello. You know, Wolverine's been out of commission, but I speak to him all the time. He showed up in the comments a few times. But he says hi, too. But Laddie is my, my sounding board. So thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of a long journey. I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. Remember this Thursday, we have a tale of two Twisbees. So thank you all so much for being here. I promise we will see each other again very soon, further up the road. So thank you. Take care. Much love to you all.